Welcome to the Friday Five with Steve Greenfield on CBT News. Welcome to this week's Friday Five, where we recap the last week's automotive technology deals. This is Steve Greenfield from Automotive Ventures, and thanks for joining us. It's Thanksgiving week, and as a result, acquisition and investment deal flow has been a little slow. Despite a slow holiday week, I'm hearing that we may see some big deals happen before the end of the year. Let's start by looking at the automotive industry. As we've discussed before on the show, the auto industry has done incredibly well through the COVID pandemic. Industry executives have found that stocking fewer cars amid high demand has lifted profits for automakers and dealers alike. The result has been a seller's market with car companies able to hold the line on discounts, driving prices to record highs. Now, both dealers and OEMs are talking about carrying fewer vehicles on the dealership's lots permanently in what would mark a monumental shift in the way cars are sold in the US. In addition, because of the inventory crunch, car companies have been giving priority to their most popular models and feature combinations, which has reduced complexity and cut supply chain costs. It's been said before that one shouldn't waste a crisis, and with OEMs being smarter around new car production, and dealers being smarter around their cost structures, we may very well come out of the pandemic with a far stronger and healthier automotive industry. Let's get to this week's automotive technology transactions. A Friday Five wouldn't be complete without another electric vehicle manufacturer going public via a Special Purpose Acquisition Corporation or SPAC. Electric Last Mile Solutions, an electric vehicle startup focused on electric delivery vans, is in talks to go public through a merger with SPAC Forum Merger the Third Corporation. A $250 million reverse merger with Forum could value the company at over $1 billion based on previous electric vehicle SPAC deals. The electric vehicle space has been very active this year and competition continues to heat up. Startup RideVision, the developer of collision aversion technology for motorcycles, has raised $7 million in Series A funding led by, by our crowd. RideVision was founded in 2018 in Israel and has developed an AI-driven safety alert system technology to prevent motorcycle collisions on the road using standard cameras as visual sensors. The hardware includes two wide-angle cameras mounted on both the front and the rear of the vehicle, unique alert indicators placed on the mirrors, and an onboard main computing unit that stores the startup's patented algorithms. The company says patented human-machine warning interface and predictive vision algorithms help riders make critical, life-saving decisions in real time. Gaddick, a startup developing an autonomous vehicle stack for B2B short-haul logistics, today closed a $25 million Series A round. The company also announced it will bring a fleet of self-driving vans to Canada as part of a deal with Loblaw Companies Limited, the country's largest retailer with over 200,000 employees. LunaWave, the Arizona-based startup developing a novel technology for radars for autonomous vehicles, has raised $7 million in financing as it gets ready for the commercial rollout of its systems. The company's latest financing came from Prosea Ventures, Blue Nine Capital, Singyan Ventures, and Intact Ventures. With the latest funding, LunaWave will continue to work with Tier 1 suppliers to establish strategic partnerships and jointly manufacture the company's radar sensor. Sense Photonics, a developer of technology for use in autonomous vehicles, has added another $6 million in funding to a round launched two years ago. Since April, and despite the pandemic, the company has hired a former Google executive as its CEO, grown its headcount from around 15 to 70 employees, and raised its funding totals from investors to more than $32 million. What helps Sense Photonics stand out from other LiDAR companies is that, is that its technology is solid state and has no moving parts. They believe that competing LiDAR technologies involving a spinning light emitter and receiver is more likely to wear out, especially as vehicles experience vibration from potholes and wind. Sense Photonics emitters don't move, which allows them to be more subtly integrated into windshields and headlights. Sense believes that for the next few years, the automotive industry will use LiDAR to improve assisted driving rather than to create fully autonomous vehicles. In the wholesale auction space, we saw more M&A activity this week. The McConkie Auction Group announced the acquisition of ABS Auto Auctions. ABS has 10 auctions throughout the West, including locations in California, 
Nevada, Oregon, and Arizona. Back in August of this year, the McConkie Auction Group, headquartered in Spokane, Washington, announced that it added Dealers Auto Auction of Las Vegas to its group. The wholesale auction space has been very active this year, including Car Global's $525 million acquisition of online dealer-to-dealer -dealer platform Backlot Cars. We're eagerly awaiting to hear more about the rumors of ACV Auction's upcoming public offering. The online used car sales space has been hot this year, particularly buoyed by Carvana's traction in the market and matching $40 billion market capitalization. Ford Motor Company announced this week that they will launch a new online used vehicle platform and brand early next year called Ford Blue Advantage that will link all 3,100 Ford dealers used inventory and feature guaranteed pricing and delivery. This sounds a lot like Ford powering their own third-party marketplace to compete for consumer attention with other players in the market, including AutoTraderCars.com, CarGurus, and Carvana. Online vehicle marketplaces owned and operated by OEMs haven't had a lot of luck in the past, but this new initiative from Ford will be one for us to watch. We continue to highlight interesting companies in the automotive technology space to keep an eye on. If you read my monthly newsletter, I showcase a few companies each month and we take the opportunity here on the Friday Five to share some of those companies each week with you. Today, we'll look at two very interesting automotive technology companies, Reviver Auto and Dignify. Our first company to watch, Reviver Auto, was founded in 2009 in Granite Bay, California by Neville Boston. Reviver Auto is the creator of the world's first connected license plates. Their mission is to bring new and far-reaching efficiencies, revolutionary marketing, and unprecedented connectivity to the auto industry through disruptive technology. With its R-plate product, the company has reinvented the 125-year-old stamped metal license plate into a connected car platform that digitizes and automates the costly, often frustrating and time-consuming DMV renewal process. Approved by multiple DMVs and DOTs, their R-plate also provides telematics functionality and brings a new level of personalization to existing license plates. The company's digitization of the vehicle registration renewal process is a game changer for motor vehicle administrators with dramatic cost benefits. Our second company to watch is Dignify, founded in 2012 and located in Bellevue, Washington. Dignify aims to get consumers a car repair loan that's easy, flexible, and affordable. Dignify works with vehicle repair shops to help consumers easily finance and take the worry out of paying for car repairs. The consumer can proceed with their needed vehicle repair and pay over time. The consumer pays no money down and doesn't pay any interest if they pay off their loan in the first 90 days. Dignify is a great alternative to the consumer racking up credit card bills with prohibitive interest rates. Approved applicants may also qualify for other smart products designed to make their lives a little easier and safer, like roadside assistance and a vehicle protection plan. In July, Dignify announced they raised $14 million in Series A funding from Bill Group and XOR Seeds, the venture arm of XOR NV, which is the holding company of the Agnelli family, the controlling shareholders of Fiat Chrysler. Dignify also signed an agreement with Neuberger Berman Private Equity to buy $275 million in assets, which will allow it to grow its network of 5,000 auto service centers. So that's your weekly Friday Five, a quick wrap up of the big deals in automotive technology over the past week. It's an exciting time to be in the automotive space and make sure you stay tuned in each week to stay up to date on the auto industry's technology M&A activity. I'll keep my fingers on the pulse of deals being done, so tune in each week so I can share updates with you. Feel free to connect with me anytime. I always look forward to catching up to discuss the industry. Thanks for tuning in to CBT News for this week's Friday Five, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Friday Five with your host, Steve Greenfield.